Now to the big story from India, the Citizenship Amendment Act or the CAA. It's many things at the same time, a political promise, a new hope for persecuted migrants, a long pending demand and a controversial law. It was passed back in December 2019. You may remember what happened next, a lot of protests and criticism. So the government put it on the back burner. But now it's back. The government of India has notified the rules for the CAA, basically how the law will be implemented. That's what they've come up with. Now the CAA applies to six religions, six religious groups rather, Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, Parsis, Christians and Buddhists. And these people must belong to any of these three countries, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan. So if you fit this bill, if you're from one of these three countries and follow one of these religions, then your citizenship to India will be fast-tracked. That is the law. Now a couple of questions. One, why was this, this bill necessary? The government of India says to protect religious minorities in these countries, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan. Religious minorities face persecution here in a lot of cases. Thousands of them have already fled to India. The idea is to give them a new life. Question number two, why are Muslims not part of this list? And that's been the biggest question really of the critics. Rights organizations are asking it. Opposition parties are asking it. Even Indian Muslims are asking it. So now the Home Minister of India has answered this question. Listen to this. Muslim abadi ke liye hi wo hissad bharat ka bhaag nahi hai. Wo bhoomi isi liye de di gai thi. Phir to har desh se avyastha se johana chahi iske liye bharat ke darwa je khod lo. Bharat kaha batta hai? Akhand bharat ke joh log hissa thai aur jin par dharmik pratad na hui hai. उसको शरण देना मैं मानता हूं हमारी नैतिक जिम्मेदारी है और हमारी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी But the debate will not end with this. The CA has already been challenged in the Supreme Court of India. Some 200 petitions are pending. They say you cannot use religion to give citizenship. It violates the constitution. That's what the critics say. Plus, opposition parties do not like it. Some say they won't implement this law, like in the states of Kerala and West Bengal. So let's take a closer look at the technicalities. Let's understand what this this buzz is about, what the controversy is about. What has changed between 2019 and now? Will this affect Indian minorities? And can states really refuse to implement a law? Now, the CA requires a migrant to prove a few things, like your country of origin, your religion, your date of entry into India, and your knowledge of an Indian language. But how will this information be verified? Through documents. Earlier, you had to produce very specific papers. You had to come up with a valid passport or an Indian residential permit. But now that's gone. You can produce any identity document or certificate, maybe a school certificate or a birth certificate or a license. And this can also be used to determine your religion. So simply put, the threshold has been relaxed. It's now easier to prove that you're a migrant. Now we come to the date of entry. The CA has, cu has a cutoff date. December 31st, 2014. You must have entered India before this date for you to qualify. Only then can you seek citizenship via the CAA. 31st December, 2014. But how will that date be determined? Earlier you needed a visa plus other specific documents. But now it's been expanded. You can produce a variety of documents like a letter from court or a government office a tenancy agreement, any document from a public sector bank, certificates from a local lawmaker, utility bills, even a marriage certificate. Any of this can prove your date of entry into India. Again, the idea is to lower the threshold to make it easier for people to get Indian citizenship. So can state governments refuse to implement this? Well, maybe not. Citizenship applications usually go to the district collector. And who does the collector report to? the state government. So technically states should or could have refused it. But the CAA rules call for a new body, a body that will report to the central government. Only they can receive and approve the citizenship requests. So expect a battle ahead. And now we come to the final question. Will this affect Indian minorities? The opposition says it will. They say the CAA will strip Indian Muslims of their citizenship. On what basis do they, do they say this? What is their logic? For that, we'll have to go back to 2019. Back then, the CAA was never discussed alone. Another policy tagged along with it, and that was the NRC, the National Register of Citizens.
and it's exactly what it sounds like, a list of all Indian citizens, a register. Those who do not feature on this list would eventually be deported. That was the idea. And the government said the NRC exercise would follow the CEA. So critics called it a ploy. First, give citizenship to non-Muslim migrants and then expel the Muslims. But now the equation seems to have changed. Home Minister Amit Shah was asked about this and he says there is no NRC now. He also said that no minority should fear the CAA roots. Assam mein jo NRC ki order hue wo Supreme Court of India ki. Hmm. Iska CAA se koi len den hmm. nahi hai. Assam nahi desh ke har hisse mein CAA lagu hoga. Is desh ke alsam alsankhyap minorities या तो किसी और व्यक्ति को डरने की जरूरत नहीं है क्योंकि सीए में किसी की नागरिकता लेने का प्रावधान ही नहीं है सो वॉट नेक्स्ट यू प्रोबेबली जस्ट वीक्स अवे फ्रॉम द इलेक्शन सो सी ए विल फीचर हैवीली इन इट एक्सपेक्ट बोथ साइड टू रेक इट अप एज फॉर द लॉ इट सेल्फ दर इज नो क्लोजर येट वी हैव लीगल चैलेंजेस पेंडिंग वी ऑल्सो हैव अ फेडरल स्टैंड ऑफ इन दफिंग सो दिस इज अ स्टोरी दैट इज फार फ्रॉम ओवर